Good morning. Hello. Welcome to Antioch Baptist Church Live. On behalf of Pastor Hobbs, the Antioch Baptist Church officers, its ministries and congregation, we'd like to thank you for your attendance. We hope you enjoy the service. If you're a first time visitor, please, in the comment section below, leave your name and number so we can get in contact with you. If you're a returning guest, please think about membership. If you had an anniversary this week, happy anniversary. If you've experienced a birthday this week, happy birthday. If you're interested in what goes on here at Antioch, please log on to Antioch640.org. Also, you can contact us at 973-379-1465. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Antioch Baptist Church Live. We hope you enjoy the service. God bless you. Come on, church. Let's join the praise team and lift them up. How to reach the masses.
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Lift the Savior up. Lift the Savior up. He's worthy to be praised. Good morning. Praise the Lord, everybody. This is the day the Lord has made, and we're going to rejoice and be glad in it, and we're going to share. We're going to sing songs of praise in Zion and, and, have, and join together in prayer. This is a wonderful season. and We're going from uh, April into May, and it reminds me of the old poem uh, that goes, you know, March winds and April showers bring May flowers. And that poem reminds me that how important it is for the rains to come and for the other storms to come. For had not the rain come and the, the winds come and, and prepare uh, the way for the flowers that are coming in May, we wouldn't have the wonderful greenery we, we have here in New Jersey. Uh, I, I know that wasn't written for New Jersey, but it seems to be uh, ap 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 appropriate for New Jersey. Apropos is what I wanted to say, because we have rain. This morning it was raining outside, and we're just looking for and waiting for a wonderful spring where we have consistent warm weather. And what that reminds me of is, yes, we always want the great, wonderful things in life, but the thing about it is that we have to prepare ourselves, and we have to prepare during those times of rain, those rainy seasons, and those seasons that are not so good, let us prepare our hearts and our minds for a wonderful and glorious, we have expectation, right? Of great expectations of wonderful things to come. But while they're coming, and while we're waiting, and while we're going through, we have to learn to praise God anyway. We have to learn how to break up the fallow ground of our hearts and our minds and begin to give God the praise. And that's what we're going to do this morning. We're going to come, and irrespective of what's going on, we're going to praise him, right? Irrespective of, of, of the things that's happening in our lives, we're not going to stand here and be stoic. We're not going to stand and not give God praise, but instead, we're going to praise him. Yeah, you're home or wherever you might be, uh, you're in your car, uh, it, it doesn't matter where you are, the Spirit of the Lord is there. You are the church of the living God. Your body, oh God, in you is his spirit. And if you have him this morning, I would solicit your help and your, your support and your prayers with me as we go before our Lord and our King. Let's give him praise. Let's not let the situation rule us, but let's rule the situation. We rule this day. It doesn't matter if we can't all gather, but guess what? We're gathering in his spirit, giving him honor and the glory. So I would ask this morning, every child of God that knows him, come on, let's give him praise. Let's give him honor. Let's give him glory because he's worthy of all our praise. We're asked uh, Deacon Walker, come on, bring us into a powerful prayer, and we're going to have service this morning. God bless you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Nothing like praising our God, especially when we come before his throne. So let's go to our Heavenly Father. Heavenly, eternal Father, we thank you and we praise you, Lord, and we give you honor, Lord. Your creation is shows, Lord, just how fantastic you are, how artistic you are, Lord, how creative you are, Lord. We look at the seasons, Lord, and we go by the seasons. We know by the different things that happen during the seasons, Lord, how you are in control, Lord, how we, we can only guess what the weather is, Lord, but God, you are still in control, Lord, and we, we know that, Lord. We realize that you are in control, Lord. Creation shows, Lord, that, that, that there is a God, Lord, so no man is ignorant to the fact that you exist, Lord, but we thank you, Lord, that we had that intimate relationship with you. And Lord, we desire this morning that everyone, Lord, that under the sound of my voice would have that same relationship, Lord, that they would come to know you, Lord. So we ask right now, Lord, that you would move on their hearts, Lord. Lord, Lord, before I forget, Lord, please occupy this place, Lord. Occupy every place under the sound of my voice, Lord. Fill us, Lord, with your spirit so that we can effectively do your work, Lord, so we can effectively represent you, Lord, because we can't do it on our own, Lord. Forgive us, Lord, of our shortcomings, Lord, those both that we willingly committed and those that aren't known to us, Lord. Have your way in this service today, Lord. And, and Lord, we know in your presence, Lord, is healing, Lord. In your presence, Lord, is the power that we need, Lord. In your presence, Lord, is, is the love that flows forth, Lord. So we thank you this morning, Lord, for your presence here, Lord, and for what you're going to do today, Lord. Thank you for what you've done this week, Lord. But we, we have to thank you for today, Lord. We thank you for this opportunity, Lord, to again serve you and, Lord, to hear from you today. We desire to hear from you today. So, Lord, again, speak to us today, Lord, and we anticipate the return of your son, Jesus. And it's by his name that we are able to ask this, Lord, by his name that we are forgiven, Lord, and washed of our sins, Lord. And we thank you 
for your son, Jesus. Have your way. Amen. you are right now come on just give god a praise he's worthy of all the praise and the honor oh right just i wish you would just join me and just praise them in your own way in your own manner just however you're feeling it but i know if you just give him a chance if you just give him an opportunity he'll fill your heart with joy i, I feel joy in my soul this morning joy like a river flowing all over me. Do you feel that? Do you feel his presence? Do you, did, did, did you just hear the words of the song that went before? Did you just understand that he's wonderful, he's marvelous, and he's done so many wonderful things for us that we must, every opportunity we have, we are obligated 
We're responsible to praise him. He has drawn us to him that he may get the praise. For he said, as he's lifted up, and I know he was talking about the cross, but guess what? As we lift him up with our voices, as we lift him up in our lives, well, he will draw all men unto him. Oh, it's not our drawing. It's not this service. It's not the cameras. It's the lighting. It's not all that. It's him that draws. And we're asking the Lord this morning, draw someone who doesn't know you. Draw even those of us who do know you. We want to be closer and closer. We want to know you better. I feel the spirit of God. He wants to do something special in our lives if we just let him. But we got to do the work. And that's what we're going to talk about for a second. As a matter of fact, that's a good segue into our scripture. If you have your Bibles, we're at Romans, the eighth chapter, and just the 18th and 19th verses for now. And when you get an opportunity, you can read the rest on your own. But Romans 8, 18 says, for I consider that the suffering of this present time, anybody suffering right now? Hallelujah. I consider that the suffering of this present time uh, are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Wait a minute. With the glory which shall be revealed where? In us. Not just around us. Not just at our churches. Not just in our neighborhood, but what? In us. For the earnest expectation of the creation, the whole creation, eagerly awaits for the revealing of the sons or the children of God. Can you say amen to the reading of God's holy and righteous word? This is a, a, a statement with such power and authority and mystery, if you will, that speaks of the entire creation of earth, the entirety of all the planets, the entirety of everything that God made is waiting for us. Uh, and I know it's kind of hard to even imagine, but it's waiting for you and it's waiting for me. Let me just make it clear for us to get our act together. It's, he says here that every, the trees and the skies and the birds and the seas, all those things that were impacted as a result of man's sinfulness. When Adam and Eve fell and, and the earth went into chaos and, and, and floods and, and, and hurricanes and volcanoes and all kinds of turmoil happen uh, as a result of our disobedience. He's saying, I made some children. I have some children on the horizon. I have some folk on the horizon that when they get their act together, <laughs> when, they, when they come together like I really want them to come together with power, and authority, oh yes, oh yes, anointing, when they come together like they're supposed to. He said the whole earth is going to rejoice. All creation is waiting for the expectation. There is an expectation that we're going to get it together. There's an expectation that the, our Christ, our Lord, our Savior, our King, he's coming. And when he comes, he's joining up with a people that are ready, a people that are postured for victory, a people that are, are his and his alone. Aren't you excited about that? Just to know that you are called a part of his bride. Aren't you excited just to know that he did all this for a day when we will celebrate uh, in our new created bodies, not made by hand. We are become new creations in him. So Paul lays out this wonderful mysteries. Do your people understand who you are? And whose you are in Christ. And I wish this morning that we could really uh, uh, get it. And, and, and as I was thinking, I said, Lord, how to best approach this? How to best describe what you're doing? And I thought back to what I mentioned earlier about April showers and May's flowers. For you see, we have an expectation when spring is coming. And some of us know spring better than others. Those of you who are like me, who are allergy sufferers, I don't have to see any plants. I don't have to see anything. But I can tell you, it's springtime because of the way I feel. The thing that happens to me, it's in the air. There is something happening in the atmosphere. And in that atmosphere, there's an expectation. And so I go to sleep 
and the trees are, are, are look dead and they don't look alive. But you go to sleep and you wake up the next morning and you see little buds coming out on the trees and little things happening. And the grass for a couple of weeks ago, there wasn't hardly any grass to speak of. But now you look and slowly but surely, what's happening? The grass is coming up. Things are budding. There, there are flowers coming. And it's all because that during the course of this winter and during the course of March and, and, and March came with the cold and, and cleaned out everything and, and, and April came with showers and it's showering even today. Those of us who are from New Jersey, um, it's raining here in Jersey, y'all. I don't know where the rest of you people are from, but it's raining here, but we're not upset. We're not, we're not upset. We expect rain in April, for we know about April showers. And those showers come, and those showers help to bring, um, make this the garden state. Many of y'all don't know. This is the garden state, and we have wonderful vegetation. We have wonderful flowers and plants. We even have farms. As quiet as it's kept, New Jersey has a lot of good food and a lot of wonderful farms. But it happens because that there was rain that came. Some of us in the spiritual, we are so upset when it rains in our lives. We're upset when things don't go our way. I got news for you that without the rain, uh, you can't even really appreciate the sunshine. But there are things happening when you go through certain situations, certain trials and tribulations. When those things come, they make us stronger. When those things come, oh God, they prepare us. But I got other news for you that we can't control the rain. That's in God's domain. He reigns upon the earth, upon the righteous and the unrighteous, whenever he feels. The difference is those people who are preparing themselves. Are you preparing? The, uh, the old folks used to say, breaking up the fallow ground. There's a scripture in Hosea, I believe, that speaks of we need to break up. What does that mean? That means, listen, it doesn't matter if you just have seed. It doesn't matter if you just have plants. I Remember I talked about all these wonderful plants? That didn't happen by magic. I have news for you. When you see those rows of corn that are so perfectly planted, when you see um, the lilies and, and, and these other wonderful plants and, and, and the blueberries and the strawberries that we're so proud of here in New Jersey, this didn't happen by magic. It wasn't as if you just woke up and all of a sudden it was there. Somebody worked diligently. Somebody planted. Somebody uh, uh, broke up the ground. Somebody understood what nutrients need to be in the soil. Someone, I'm not a farmer by any stretch of imagination, so I'm the wrong one to ask, but there are people who are proficient in that industry and they work diligently to make sure. Now, wouldn't I be crazy? I go outside where I live now and I'm amazed at some of the wonderful flowers I see. People have all these flowers and, 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 and I, I walk past in the morning and I'm just amazed and I'm just so happy but then I come to my place and there's no flowers. And I'm like, wow, I don't have flowers. Why don't I have flowers? I go to sleep. I wake up the next morning. Maybe I'll have flowers tomorrow. I come back, no more flowers. I wake up day. Now, wouldn't it be crazy when May comes for me just to get up on the first day of May and expect to see flowers? There's two reasons I don't have flowers. Let me tell you. Number one reason, I didn't plant any. I didn't put any seed down, and so there's no flowers. If I don't plant seed, guess what? No seed will come up. The second thing is, even if I had thrown some seed down, I didn't prepare the ground. I didn't do the groundwork, as they say, right, to make sure that the seeds are planted properly, that they're at the correct depth that they have the nutrients they need and the fertilization that they need. I didn't do any of that. Consequently, there's no reason for me to expect I'm going to have any beautiful flowers. Oh, can I preach now? Many of us go through this thing called Christendom, and we think that just coming and sitting in a pew, when we were sitting in pews, was wonderful. I made it to the church house, and that is enough. I got news for you. That has never been enough. Sitting in a church and sitting in a pew is wonderful. We love it because we love your presence. We love to see you. That's what we're missing now. Many of us are now saying, what can we do to get back and sit in the pews again? But you know what? I'm hoping that we have learned while we're sitting home what the value of hard work. The work that has to be done doesn't happen in pews. The pews are not the soil. 
The pews are not where we do the work, but we do the work outside. Uh, salvation, I got, I got uh, 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 something that came to my mind. We talk about, uh, the Bible talks about what the mustard seed, being one of the smallest seeds, but when it grows, it grows to a mighty tree, right? One of the biggest trees around, but it starts out as one of the smallest seeds. Well, guess what? I got news for you. A mustard tree is not an indoor plant. You don't grow mustards in the house. You, grow, you don't grow trees in the house. If you're going to grow, grow something big, you know where that happens? That happens outside, outdoors. And now the Lord has us where each and every one of us has a calling. We have work to do. And if you're going to have expectations of God blessing us, there has to be some work that you have to do. There's work I have to do. We cannot uh, uh, negate our work because we want a fellowship. Fellowship in and of itself is a wonderful thing, but it doesn't mean I don't do the work. And right now, God is calling all hands on deck. Oh, yes, it's April, and we have experienced April showers. I'm talking about spiritually. For a whole year, we've gone through um, COVID, and we've gone through all kind of crisis. It has been raining in our lives. It's been storming in our lives. Things have happened. But guess what? We won't get the expectation of the growth we should get until we do the work that we have to do and breaking up the fallow ground even in our own hearts. We're not going to get, we want justice, but we're not going to get justice. How am I going to ask for justice if I have in my heart hatred? How am I going to get justice if, if in my heart, in my mind, I haven't forgiven that those people have done me wrong? We want other things in our lives. I want, I want to be blessed, but I haven't been a blessing. Why then would I get blessed? Are you following me? I, I want things, but I shouldn't have an expectation unless I prepared the way. God has already in his word told us the many things that we need to do uh, um, to be blessed. If you want to give, when we give, men should give back to us. If I don't give, guess what? I'm not getting anything back. And then we wonder why I have lack, why I'm not where I'm supposed to be, why I'm not blessed. Well, listen, if I, if I want the Lord to forgive me, he said, until you forgive your brothers and sisters, but he has no uh, uh, reason to forgive you. The promise is to those who follow his word, those who follow, I can't. I can't harbor hatred in my heart and expect others to love me. I cannot harbor, oh yes, yes, ill feelings and ill will against others and expect that it's going to happen for me, uh, something wonderful. Why? It's not going to happen that way. But when I give my all to Christ, when I give up what I want, when I surrender to his will and to his word, when I do the things that he's called me to do, then I should look with great expectations at the wonderful things on the horizon. Oh, it's when I break up the fallow the fallow ground in my own heart, when I stop uh, um, um, harboring things, when I stop uh, holding grudges, when I stop talking about others, when I start looking and acting like Christ, uh, I ought to be every day trying to emulate. When I, if I want to grow up, listen, if you want to plant corn, when you plant corn, what do you expect to come up? Corn. When you plant, uh, um, what some of y'all folk that from down south, what y'all plant? Cotton and, and, and tobacco. When you, if you plant tobacco and corn comes up, something is wrong. You say, wait a minute, I didn't plant that. Well, guess what? The same is true of us. If you want love to come up, you got to plant love. If you want prosperity to come up, you got to plant something in the ground. It, there's got to be, a, a, what, it's a quid pro quo. Whatever I plant, that's what I will reap. Whatever it is that I put in the ground is what comes out of it. I'm hoping you're understanding, even though I'm using the analogy of ground, I'm talking about our spiritual ground. That's that, that, that area that what God has given us to control. And so I want to just go back for a second at the Apostle Paul when he's talking about earnest expectation of the saints and that the world is waiting for us to get ourselves together. I got news for you that our work is not finished just on ourselves. Yes, we got to work on ourselves and we got to see to it that we do what we're supposed to do. But there's one other thing that Christ is calling us to. And he's calling us to work and become, work at becoming one, even as he and the Father are one. Are y'all hearing me this morning? And it's in that work, that's the difficult work, right? That we come as brothers and sisters across every division, across every denomination, across every racial and ethnic group, uh, across every, even every, watch this, even every theology. The fact that I do things slightly different than you and you do things slightly different from me does not discount either of us from being children of God. And when we learn to get together, 
When we learn to hold hands together, it doesn't matter where you're from. It doesn't matter what you look like, how you dress. It doesn't matter anything, but I know that you are a child of God. When we all get together, we sing songs when we all get to heaven. What a good day of rejoicing that will be. But guess what? We're not going to have that expectation until we realize it now. We can't wait to get to heaven to say we're one. But Christ prayed, I want you to be one even now. And so our prayer this morning, even as we are on these digital platforms, is, Lord, help us to reach everybody. Oh, yes, I love all of you uh, at Antioch. I love you from the bottom of my heart. But Antioch, we've got to reach out. We've got to touch the world. We've got to touch this place called Springfield, New Jersey. But not just New Jersey and not just Springfield, but all of Jersey, all of the United States, all of the world, whoever and wherever somebody wants to be saved, we're here for you this morning. And we're praying with you and for you that God will save you. He saves to the utmost. We're grateful to know that, but now is our time to share it. And how do we share it? We've got to plant it in the good soil, <laughs> The soil of, what, of a broken heart, of a contrite heart and a spirit that says, yes, Lord. Not just our heart, but I'm praying, Lord, please, those who are listening and those who are hearing us this morning, that their hearts will be open and receptive. Oh, that's a whole nother message. I, I, hear, I hear you, Jesus. <laughs> that's receptive, right, to what God is bringing. Lord, save somebody. That's our call. That's our mission. Save some folk. Oh, God, let them know your love and let them know of your peace. I would that you would pray with me this morning as we conclude this service, but let's listen, never, never go from this service and, and leave Christ. The same spirit now, what? I want to go with you, be in you, and work through you in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us bow our head. Father God, we're excited this morning. We're excited at the, at the notion that you have considered us so much, that, that, that you have put your spirit in us to work through us and to create in us a, 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 a work ethic that, that works tirelessly to call souls to repentance, that works diligently to show and to shine and to let our lights, oh God, attract those who are far off, that they may become close, that we may all be nigh with you, Lord, and fellowshipping with you. Oh, Lord, we thank you so much for this time and for this occasion. And we ask even now, as we close this service, won't you be with each and every person under the sound of my voice? Bless them totally, Lord. Fill them with your spirit. Hallelujah. Let your anointing, your Shekinah glory overshadow them now. And that we may know you, that we may not only know you, feel you, that we may sup with you, but more than anything, that we may be your servants. These things we pray in the matchless name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let all those people say amen, amen. God bless you and may heaven smile upon you. Until next time.